FY16 revenue forecast and assumptions. Yes, as we put together the budget, which we have already begun to do for the coming year, and I'd remind the public that our fiscal year is July 1 through June 30th. So as we put together the budget, we want to give you a briefing on the forecast for revenue and also budget assumptions that we are making. And Gail will do that, please. All right. Um, we're going to talk about the revenue forecast and some budget <coughs> assumptions. Um, we're going to assume that there's no increase in the property tax rate. Um, so we're going to forecast a very similar property tax rate. We did talk to the county and they feel like there are going to be some appeals this year based on the number of folks who um, filed their appeals late last year. There's apparently a, a period of time this year when they can do that. So, but we don't think that's going to be a big, huge number. So we're going to kind of keep the property tax flat. Um, the sales tax is going to increase slightly and that's due to the change in the, ta in the property tax rates. You know how it's distributed based on property tax levy so everybody changed their property taxes last year um, we'll probably get about a hundred maybe a hundred and fifty thousand dollars more in sales tax from that um, right now I'm assuming pal bill funding will remain stable I don't know based on what we said earlier that may not be the case um, like I said the league comes out with their estimates in March or April and they give us a per person, per mile figure, and, and we have those numbers, so we can more accurately estimate. Um, no increase in the water and sewer rates, no increase in the stormwater fee, and no increase in the residential solid waste fee. However, the annual subsidy from the general fund is going to continue. Make a motion to adopt the budget. <laughs> as long as we're within Done. those guidelines. <laughs> I told you it wasn't all bad. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, and I was going to ask uh, on that slide if anybody has any objections or feel like those assumptions are not valid, let us know now. Okay. Hearing none, that's how we'll put together the budget. Um, we are assuming the privilege license will not return. You know, there's been some discussion that it might. Um, so that's a $750,000 loss of revenue. Um, and to deal with that, we're going to cut spending. And um, there's a few new revenue sources. I think Richard's going to talk about those in a few minutes on uh, some other slides. Um, we've talked about fuel pricing. And we've been budgeting um, $3.60 for unleaded and three ninety five dollars for diesel. The maximum we've paid over the last three years is significantly less than that, so we feel comfortable in reducing that a little bit. We're not reducing it to what we're paying today, but we're going to reduce it to the maximum we paid in the last three years. Nor do we want to reduce it much further. I don't know whether over the weekend you, you watched some of the news programs that had to do with uh, oil and the price of oil, but in that, the the professionals, the people who buy and sell, are saying that they believe in the next year that you will see gasoline at the pump as low as $1.52. For every person who said that, you had a person who said, but we believe in three years that the price at the pump will be over $5. We need to, it, it's one thing to, to reduce this a little bit. We don't believe we need to reduce it a lot, and here's the reason why. All the money that you do not spend that goes into this budget goes where the next year, back into the next budget. We don't want to dig ourselves a hole where three, four, five, six years from now when gas is back up or a barrel of, of oil is back up to over $100, that we suddenly say, well, oops, we now need to add two or $300,000 to our budget because it has inflated. So we're taking a conservative approach if you feel that that number should be higher than 315 or diesel should be higher than 345, the 315 obviously is a 45 cent drop. The 345 is a 50 cent drop. We would not recommend it going any lower. And if you feel we should leave it higher, we certainly will take that advice. Anybody? I'd, say, on that. I'd say leave it where it is. At the current rate? 
think it's a good average. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm, I think like you, um, I wouldn't go so low as as to under project what could happen. <coughs> Excuse me. One thing to be conservative, but uh, another to to be putting in numbers that you know are are, are false. I mean, a, the budget is supposed to be a a best guess at at what we're looking at. I don't I don't really want to go in with uh, but if with you look inflated at numbers. But if you look at the history of gasoline and its pricing, though, I think you'll see that there's too much uncertainty with it. And I don't think what you'll end up saving in a budget cycle over a period of a year, just in my opinion, is substantial enough to where, I mean, you could put yourself in a, in a bad position. I mean, it, it rolls back in anyways. I don't True. think it's significant enough to... Let's do this. Let's actually, you know, it's one thing to talk about a price per gallon. It's another thing to actually see what the total dollars are. So we will give you the total dollars at each of those numbers. Yeah. Then you can give us better I guidance. Think that would give us more of an idea of an impact if things went south in the price. So. Okay. But I agree with you not to overinflate the numbers either. I think somewhere in between those two numbers would probably... You know, my, my experience has been that, as a general rule, um, the budget is, has always been been conservative anyway, the budget. Maybe not individual portions, but overall the budget as a whole tends to be conservative. And so I, you know, I'm comfortable with them reducing it down to a, you know, a, 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 it's a still conservative level. We will give you numbers in gross that shows you for all departments, general fund and then the individual departments, what that budget is today and what it would go to at each of these numbers for the coming year. I'd like to say too that I uh, think that, you know, just because it has gone down recently that I, I think it's still going to be important over the long, long term to look for ways that we can reduce just the consumption. total consumption, consumption that we have because that's a real Achilles heel come a shock of some type. One of, the, one of the things that Michael LaQuarrie has just recently done, we are experimenting on turning some of our large mowers and converting them from a gasoline to a, is it natural gas, Michael? Propane. 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 And we, that's one of our new experiments and we will be doing that through the mowing season and we'll let you know. We did talk to Ed Richards, the uh, leader of our fleet group about doing something similar for our cars. Uh, we'll be, we reported that out to you about a year ago that it just really had too many problems, but we do need to continue to look at alternative ways. Uh, I was pleased to hear that the new Chevrolet is now getting 50 miles in between charge. I'm not so sure that's going to be beneficial to us, but you are right. We need to look at ways to hold down fuel consumption. Well, there's no dearth of research in terms of using propane and natural gas in municipalities and state government across across the country. I mean, we don't have to reinvent the wheel on that. The research is there. Okay. Please. All right, and our health care outlet outlook. I um, listed here where we ended. FY 12, 13, and 14. This is how much we had collected more than the claims we paid out. Just so you could see, it varies widely. You know, we had $500,000 left at the end of 12. We only had 47,000 left at 13. It's very <clears throat> difficult to predict. Um, <clears throat> but we're running a little high this year, I think. Um, and according to our broker, the national average healthcare cost projection for next year is 8%. Our experience is usually less than that. I don't think we'll budget 8%, but that's just the national average. And that's where we start. We look at that and then we say, what, was, what is our claims history? You know, what do we think we're going to see? Um, and there's um, next year an Affordable Health Care Act payment. We had one this year. Um, the one next year is reduced just a little bit. Um, it's made up of two components. One's a $2 per covered life um, and is slated, slated to go on for about seven years. And the larger portion is, it was decreased from $63 to $44 for next year. 
and it's expected to drop to $33 in the third year and then go away. Did you mean $33 or 33000 $33 per covered life. Oh, $33, and thank you. And we estimate about 1,000 lives. That includes all the dependents that are covered on the health insurance. And so saying it a different way, for our total program, we've gone from basically 63,000 to 40, 46,000. 6, and that will drop to 33, uh, 35,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. You pay that even on, on dependents? Yes, it's covered lives. So it's not just the employees, it's everybody that's covered under the plan. But now let's talk about the, the fund. Remember, the money that's left over on the health insurance program every year does not go to the general fund. It does not go back to the water and sewer fund. It is captured in a health insurance fund. So that, that money that you're talking about comes from the health insurance fund. And I'll also remind you that for the last two years, we have not passed on a rate increase to the employees because we have said that fund <coughs> got up to like a million dollars and that we were going to take from that fund. Well, as you can see, the reason it got up to a million dollars was in FY12, we added 500,000 to it. The next year we added a little bit, and last year we added a nice chunk again. This is why we stress to the employees wellness. It's a direct benefit. If you don't want your rates to go up, eat healthy, exercise, you know, go out and, uh, and do the right things in life, not the wrong things. Otherwise, you're going to see your health insurance premiums go up. But we are assuming this year that there will be an 8% increase or less. And again, our recommendation to you here would be that that increase would not come from additional funding from the employee, nor would it come from additional funding from the city's sources. It will come from the fund reserve. Um, and the next bullet was, again, the wellness initiatives. HR has worked um, with the staff to try to push the wellness programs and, and keep everybody healthy and keep our costs down. Um, they also went out to bid for our voluntary benefits. We have several voluntary benefits that the employee pays for, but included in that was the life insurance paid for by the city. And I think the final determination is they may be able to beef up the life insurance benefit for the same cost from that bid. And this is just a graphical um, depiction of our revenues, the two major revenues in the general fund. The property tax, you can see, is um, up some and the sales tax conversely is down a little. And we're predicting just about the same thing for FY16 for both. While you're talking about sales tax, uh, several of you have asked about pending legislation that could change the sales tax distribution. Uh, we will prepare a paper that gives you some guidance that shows different formulas at this point, we really have not seen a bill. We hear a lot of conversation, but until we see the bill, everything is just simply guessing. But even so, it's pretty simple. If you guess that it's based upon population only, what would be the impact? So we'll prepare a paper that says, here's what could happen under different scenarios. And then once we see a bill, we will update that for you. Right. Um, and Powell bill, again, is expected to remain the same. Um, for the capital reserves, we wanted to just talk about the council initiatives. It was uh, established in 1998. Um, one cent generated about $352,000 in FY15. That was a million four that went into the capital reserve to fund those projects. Um, the current uncommitted <laughs> balance is about $1.15 million. Now that does include the 400,000 we're transferring back from Phillips Park. And then um, <laughs> listed under that are the potential uses for that 1.1. We've got Fire Station 2 to complete. We've got the Sturgeon City building. And then there's some other projects I think out there, maybe <clears> some <throat> land purchase that 
we might potentially Can use that. Our station what, two isn't uh, yeah. isn't budgeted. Yeah. It what? is, but we're not sure if it's going to be completed within the budget. I think right now we we are well on track to have it completed within the budget. Okay. But at the same time, there were there were certain elements that were not included in the bid. For example, Spencer, you're going to have to help me out. What's the name of the exhaust system? Whatever it was, he said <laughs> it's the exhaust system that was not in there. Some of the other, Ron, you may know some of the items. Electricity. <laughs> <laughs> but Water. we we do believe that you're going to you're going to be in that budget for the construction, and we also feel comfortable at this point. But until we finalize it and and open it, we're just saying there is the potential. And as we said earlier, uh, Sturgeon City. You know, we are looking at three to four hundred thousand dollars that's not currently in that funding, but depending on what the final bids are. Okay. And this is just a list of what that four cents goes currently to fund um, each of these projects, and it's the debt service on them, and it lists the year that that expires and the amount that was budgeted in FY15. I think the, you know the nice thing to know is that uh, we're already talking about FY16, so you can see that uh, you know a million dollars is going to be freed up within a reasonable time period, because you know you'll have Jacksonville Landing paid for, the City Hall rehab paid for, the public services and fleet area, you know paid for, and uh, that will give you the opportunity to decide what major capital investments you want to make once those get freed. Please. And then um, I think you wanted to talk about the schedule. Yes, uh, given the comment a moment ago, we will have the budget for you to adopt the first meeting in April. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it now. <laughs> The draft CIP will come to you in February. It really will not have uh, any surprises in it. You have gotten this process down where you understand year by year. We will do the final management budgets in March. We'll begin the workshops in April with a public hearing in May and adoption no later than June the 30th. In all seriousness, this is a budget that we believe uh, you could be able to adopt in early May, late May at the latest. Uh, we're not rushing you in any way, but this is a budget that we understand the realities of taxes and fees. We understand where we are. We believe that we'll present a budget to you that you'll be able to move through in a rapid fashion, in a thorough fashion. Does that schedule seem reasonable to you? The Sturgeon City Building, refresh my memory about the cost sharing agreement with the <coughs> At, at the risk of being wrong, I'm going to just give you some numbers that Gail doesn't like for me to do, okay? Uh -huh. My memory is it's a $4 million, $4 million of the bond was set aside for Sturgeon City. That included the architectural fees, and the architectural fees are generally, let's just say, $350,000, okay? The payment plan for $4 million is roughly $300,000. Yeah, $300,000 a year. And of that, it's really split three ways, if I remember correctly. 75000 comes from Surgeon City, yep, the board. 75000 comes from the general fund. Uh, general fund. 150 from TDA. From the TDA. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's my memory. And if that's, that's a memory, memory that Mr. Thomas has, then that's a memory that I'll sign off on. Anything else on this? I have a question uh, in regards to that. Should that not become a reality, the money that's been set aside, where will that go? Well, I, I think there's a legal question. You you said, not you, the city said <clears throat> in, in the bond issue that you were going to build three buildings and you specifically named them as purpose. If you chose not to build the building, I would think you'd have to go back through. That's a real legal issue. Maybe it would size the scope of it down to come to the budget, et cetera. But I well, I mean, environmentally, 
we're having some environmental issues at Sturgeon City. Should that not? Oh yeah. That those can be met. We oh, oh, see those okay. in yeah. Yeah, our, our problem with the environmental issue there is simple. <clears throat> Everybody has done everything they wanted, and literally for four months, the document has sat on the Attorney General's desk of North Carolina waiting for a signature. And John's been calling, Deanna's been calling. Is, is it, maybe it's not the Attorney General, it's the it, it, Attorney it for Diener. Diener has, as mo all state agencies, has an Assistant Attorney uh, General assigned to them. And Deanna's done the uh, emails back and forth on a monthly basis with her contact. And as you know, we have dealt with at least one of the assistant uh, attorney generals in reference to us being able to permit our own ponds in the future. And so I told <clears throat> Deanna the other day, I said, you know, please ask this person who said, well, it's with so-and-so and don't know how long it'll be. I'd be more than happy to call and see if we can't expedite it because time is of the essence. But again, <clears throat> I have not heard back as to whether or not uh, we need to make that call or if that would be prudent. We certainly don't want to offend someone and to delay things further. But again, <laughs> I, I, I don't think we're in that s position right now. I think if anything, it would maybe move things forward a little faster. But we're working toward that end to try to get that back as soon as possible. Prisoners to state their <clears throat> One thing I wanted to ask, Gail, on the, you mentioned the sales tax increase was strictly uh, a result of the new levies. Is there any anticipation of a just an overall sales tax gain in totality with the? Some of the things I've been reading are predicting that. I think we have to be really careful because across the state they they predict an increase in sales tax and. Um, they say, you know, back to levels that it was in 2000 and whatever. Well, we never saw the decrease, so I don't know that we want to project, you know. And again, the league comes out with an estimate March, April. We'll probably come up with something to put the budget together, but. Yeah, that's one of those, again, that we just um, are very conservative on the number we put in. So. We have two items that we'll try to move through very quickly and then we will uh, ask for other direction from you. At the adoption of the state legislature this past year, it was determined that they would uh, direct cities to eliminate the privilege license. As you know, that's a $750,000 loss for the city of Jacksonville. What have we done to date? Currently, we analyze every vacant position as it comes forward. If it's police and fire, we do not hold it because those are life safety issues. If it is something in the water and sewer department, even though they don't impact or are funded by the 750, we still analyze it to determine can we do that job differently? Can we assign that person differently? Part of our three E's. So we look at positions. The second thing is we've been conducting some 3 E studies, 3 E's being efficiency, economy, effectiveness. We've researched fee potential and we've accepted opportunities. Now, what have we done? Currently, there are six vacant positions that we have put on hold and we're recommending not be in next year's budget. Those were vacant positions. The last thing we want to do is to lay off people. The second thing, the young lady who has done an excellent job for us in the privilege license area, been with the city a long time. Well, if the majority of her work is privilege license and you don't have any, what are you going to do with that person? Fortunately, Gail had a, an opening come in finance. We sat down with the young lady and she said she would very much like to be retrained we have retrained her and now we have hired her. So technically, we are operating now without a person to issue privilege license. So, so far, there are seven positions that we have frozen, eliminated, whatever word you want to say. When you put together salaries and direct benefits, that's a $400,000 savings. Also, what are the three E's? We, we 
went to the marketplace and found a company that would read our meters for us. But we sent you a, an email several months ago when we got their price in, <laughs> their price was a whole lot more expensive than we we're doing. So no change there, but at least we looked. Chris has done a very good job with IT on copiers and printers and cell phone adjustments, and we are going to have some savings there. But those are not huge savings, so we're not putting a dollar figure there. We're just letting you know that by standardizing our copiers and our printers, rather than having 20 different copiers and printers we have to have supplies for, we're saving some money. Same thing with cell phones. We were able to renegotiate the cell phone package so that we have a huge amount of minutes now that are shared rather than the individual cell phones and the way they were managed. Again, that's not going to balance this budget, but at the end of the day, you know, you're going to save several thousand dollars. But until we actually save it, you know, it's, but it's, we just want you to see we're doing three years. The other thing is the state law permits the fire department and the city to file a claim where there is an accident and a hazmat spill. We are not doing what another sister city in this county is doing, and that is charging for accident for police and so forth. They have their legal opinion. We have John, and John is uh, right on target, I believe, here by saying the only thing the state law allows us to recover is hazmat. Well, as Spencer and, and Mike and Jerry, Jerry began to analyze this, we realized we really haven't been diligent in filing those. And money's getting scarce and more scarce, so we're, we have become very diligent. We've already started doing that several months ago. We predict that we will collect somewhere forty to $50,000 per year. And I would also remind you that's paid for by insurance, it's not a direct bill to the person involved in the accident, and it is allowed by state law. And then the next opportunity is one that we have been briefing you on, and that is passport. We did receive approval on January 14th. We're going to use current staff, and we project somewhere between forty dollars and $50,000 per year of new revenue. So through those items, we think that we're somewhere around 500,000 towards our goal. We're gonna look at every opportunity. Again, when positions come open, we will continue to analyze them. As you know, we have eliminated a position in the clerk's office. That was one of those six or seven positions. We've eliminated several positions in the building department. Uh, and you know, Wally has some areas that we've eliminated positions. But again, at this point, no one has lost a job. We're simply downsizing through attrition. So that's pretty much the, the, where we are. Uh, the nice thing is these adjustments and these potential fees and savings are coming to us before we lose the privilege license completely. So not only are we setting ourselves up, hopefully, for uh, some some benefit next fiscal year, these are benefits that are putting money into the current contingency fund. Uh, not contingency fund, but uh, fund balance for the general fund. The next steps, we're going to continue to track the fees and opportunities, analyze positions, and look at more three E's. And anything you come up with, such as what Mr. Bittner mentioned a while ago or someone mentioned regarding alternative fuels, I believe it's Mr. Thomas, we will continue to look at those three E's. Questions or thoughts on that goal and where we are? Advisory Committee Summit occurred in this room about a month ago, and we'll run through this pretty quickly. 56 people attended. At the end, there were 23 things they liked, 24 things they'd like to change. The top likes were safety, small town feel. That was number one. Number three, citizen involvement. Number four, city military relations. Number five, had tie for military friendly and trails and bike routes. The city of Jacksonville 
you know, is, as you know, it's, it's a fabulous place to be. We are just fortunate. All you have to do is listen to the evening news. What you're going to find is public safety is making a difference in this community. In the calendar year 14, there were seven lives saved, and over the last 18 to 24 months, I believe the number is 15. Somebody back there? There's 15. 15. If you look, 3% reduction in response time this past year for police, a 4% reduction in response time for fire, over 123,000 calls for service. And I remind you, 54% of all accidents in Jacksonville are for people who don't live inside the city. That includes the major accident this past Friday at uh, Western and Gum Branch. And by the way, we have the video of that if you'd like to see, uh, I, I guess that's public record. Now. Fire calls, we had over 3,000 calls for service from the fire department, but we also had, if I can get it to go, almost 3,000 calls for service for medical. The transition that's occurring in fire is that it's no longer a fire department. That's why you all agreed to change the name to fire and emergency services. And the trend that we're seeing more and more and more is we'll be into more and more emergency services, and that's going to need more training on our personnel. Commercial robberies, down 78%. Burglaries, down 51%. 20% reduction in violent offenses and property offenses. That's an amazing report on police and fire. That's why the people in this community tell you, Public safety is what they like. I will tell you that's a daily challenge. And it's a challenge that all you have to do is listen to the evening news and you'll see what some of our sister cities are fighting. And it's not a fight that we can ever slow down on. Another thing they said was small town feel. The great things that you have funded in the way of National Night Out and Winterfest, the Jamboree, other festivals. Now the rumor that that's actually Mr. Bittner under that hat, I don't know that that's true. The small town feel for the River Palooza. Another thing that we get a lot of positive comments on, guess what? People deal with people. You still call City Hall and you get a person. Now, occasionally you will get an answering machine that says all of our people are busy and so forth. But, you know, we have a small town feel, even though we're a big community and a big organization now, we still staff things. And then, obviously, the Christmas lights. Now, Glenn says those are holiday lights, but I know better. They're Christmas lights. And the small town feel, you may have actually seen this. It's directly across from City Hall over on Johnson. This gentleman did a fabulous job. And then, of course, the holiday lights, which we put out, the Veterans Day Parade, the Christmas Parade, the Youth Council, and the support and involvement the youth have, the veterans that you honor every year, the family-oriented parks, accessible parks, and just a lot of variety of things to do. Mr. Warden, that's going to be your grandsons in a couple of years riding their bicycles. And, of course, that's down at Riverwalk Park. You can recognize the, the blue lights. And, of course, the citizen involvement, one of the other things that they mentioned was they love the fact that the advisory committees have direct contact with you, that they have regular input, that you all attend their meetings as, as liaisons, and that the city staff is there. Uh, the gentleman in red and white wearing the NC State colors proudly, and he's also talking, I believe, to uh, Mr. Thomas. Okay. He was, he was reciting some facts and figures for me. <laughs> Actually, I think what he was saying was, I'm telling you, the commercial garbage rates are not going to come in. And, of course, one of the great benefits is the fact that, just like tonight, we have a standing room only crowd here. 
but there's also standing room only in every living room that wants to turn on G10. And Glenn and his folks do an outstanding job on these. People at home are doing this voluntarily. These people are here for us. <laughs> <laughs> and again, engagement events, just like you have done. We're having an engagement event starting in just a few minutes with a neighborhood that's dealing with the rezoning. We try to engage and get input. The Citizens Academy. This past academy, we had 20 or 25 people. We're getting ready to have another one shortly. The Military Affairs Committee and the relationship that this city has, not only the city government, but also the citizens and business people. Of course, here is the mayor with General Ayala, very wonderful supporter of this city in both cases there. We have veterans on the staff. You may not realize it, but the HR director is leading a statewide effort through the governor's office to hire the vet. In Jacksonville now, over 30% of your workforce are either veterans or spouses of veterans or active military. Obviously, the Freedom Fountain continues our pledge relative to the military. The Veterans Recognition Programs you have, you all probably know Thomas Sherwood. He is one of our latest hires. Of course, when he was the military, he didn't have that stuff on his chin. I guess that civilian life gives you that uh, freedom. Mr. Massey still hasn't accepted that freedom, though. And then one of the things that they liked was the, the bicycle trails and the routes. And you know that we continue every year. The iconic trail, most recently the efforts that you and others have put together to extend the last phase so that we will have it completed all the way downtown. The bid documents on that were published last week. I believe Deanna said that the bids would be coming in in a month run. Pardon me? February the 19th. Sidewalks, we continue. Uh, one of our goals this year was to put in major sidewalks around Jacksonville High School. Those have been completed. Also, major improvements up on Western Boulevard to try to finish up those segments there. The skate park, it no longer exists. Because of damage done by a storm and insurance issues, all of this part of the skate park was dismantled. It is something that we will have to look at at the future, but we still have major recreation opportunities in the way of summer programs. We had over 1,400 youth involved in our programs just this past year. We had almost 1,600 adults. Obviously, we're strong supporters of the Onslo Sports Commission, and they are continuing to work to try to find ways to make sports an economic engine in this community. You can see our mowing, and you can also see the city seal back there. Our gateways and beautification. If you uh, have not been by the, this sign, which is uh, located uh, there at the, uh, I believe, Michael, this is the one at the Exxon station. Okay, uh, Michael's Cruz went in uh, just recently and lifted up the tree. They didn't actually lift the tree, but they limbed it up and they're planting new planting all in there and that gateway is being improved as well as uh, three projects right in that area that the DOT is gonna do with us. Obviously, this was a major improvement to the community. And when you look at what Jason is now doing with Michael's Cruz around the Freedom Fountain, and the new landscaping that we have put in. It is just amazing. You were kind to give us additional funds this year to improve Willingham Park and bring it up to the same standard as the rest of the uh, Riverwalk Park area. And I'm gonna tell you, this past summer, it was in full bloom. We have weddings down there, we have special events, we have literally hundreds of people take military pictures so that they can send to their loved ones that are deployed. You know that this is what the Depot used to look like, and in a minute you're going to see what it looks like now. We have not had the funds to completely redo all of Newbridge Street, but we at least made some strides to eliminate the volunteer trees that were there and put in, I think, something that would give beautification for a number of years. And of course, this is your new fountain now. You've asked for a detailed breakdown, labor and materials, and all planting you invested $17,000 in that 
And I know that uh, there has been some controversy over the fact that it was done and that it needed to be redone. But I'll say to you at the end of the day, this is what the city stands for, this quality of, of work. Michael's folks are to be commended. All of that was done in-house. Street sweeping continues to be a major effort. The Freedom Fountain. Now, let's talk about the next phase of the Freedom Fountain. We have the Freedom Fountain there. We've just finished landscaping that's generally adjacent to the Freedom Fountain. And very shortly, the DOT, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the city using DOT funds and some additional funds from the city will begin the last leg. And that is the phase in front of Brood Awakening where the military flag garden will be installed. And that project should be completed by March or April. Anthony, is that what you're seeing? Okay. Sanitation services continue to be one of the things people really like. Now, meter reading, we've talked about that. Uh, the transparency of the city government. These are things that your advisors said that they like about the city. Real quickly, let's just talk about some of the things that they would like to see change. The top five were tied for number one, improve older developments and potentially build a civic or convention center, pool or splash pad, increase jobs, and then of course, literally the hardest of all, lower taxes. Doesn't mean we should not try. Let's look at what we're doing. In the older neighborhoods, Greg has just shown you the work we're doing to try to spread the dollars, no pun intended, but to stretch the dollars for paving and street repairs. When it comes to the Civic and Convention Center, let's don't forget that Sturgeon City Phase 3 is in fact a beginning towards a conference center. While it will have educational things there, it will also be able to seat 450 or so people at a dinner so that we can begin to host. And I know you've all been out to the new county administration building. The county did a phenomenal thing by building that as, if I may use the term, this is not the county term, I'm not speaking for the county, but I see that as not only a government complex, but also a form of a convention center. Jeff Hudson tells us that you can seat over 500 people there. So these things are beginning to create facilities that can keep some of these events here in Jacksonville. Some space is still planned in hotels. You know, the two hotels that are generally up on Western that have lagged for a while, those are nearing completion. Uh, they will both have substantial space for uh, special events. Tourism Development Authority is certainly studying a destination uh, approach that will have the uh, possibility of uh, sports becoming an economic driver. The changes, if you haven't been down to the Jacksonville Landing since they opened the fishing pier, I'd encourage you to go down there. Uh, Gwen and I get down there about once a week just to check it out. And even in the bitter cold of several weeks ago, fishermen were out there. Now, one man told me that the reason he was there is he just needed to get away from his wife for a couple of hours. Another man told me he actually expected to uh, catch fish. But it's being used. Also, street repairs, which we've talked about. Better traffic control, we've talked about the ITS system, and of course, parking downtown. While it wasn't one of the top five, we would remind you that we've already begun to work on these things. When the Center for Public Safety is finished, it will add 60 public spaces. When the tax office is removed, we don't have an exact number, but let's just say 50 or so spaces. Court Street lot, uh, when the down on uh, across from the depot. You've already bought property there that someday in the future can be converted into parking. And then of course the old jail has been removed by the county. I believe that project is almost finished and that will probably add at least 60 spaces. I couldn't get the exact number from the county. But there are parking improvements going on in the downtown area and that should help merchants. Improve relations with the county. Here are current jobs, current, current projects that you're doing. Jacksonville Landing, downtown parking, downtown waterfront, 
800 megahertz, sheriff and police. The past year, you and the county commission have really done a good job of working together, and we believe that's going to continue. That's really the update on the issues from the advisory summit. We hope that that helps the public see that many of the things that your advisors ask us to do, we are in fact on the road to doing. Mayor, with that, that ends those portions, and I recognize the hour is a little long. We do need for you to identify over the next month any things that you want us to try to get into the budget. Now, these are not capital improvement items because those, if you can give them to us, they will go, you know, in the fourth or fifth year. What we're talking about are things such as what Mr. Willingham and I talked about last year. Willingham Park was not landscaped to the level of the rest of the park. Let's put some money in to do it. You did that. But if there are other things like that that you would like to see us in the form of task do, we would like to have your input so we'd like for you to think about that over the next several weeks. Send us an email. We'll set up another workshop to specifically ask you about those as we finalize the budget. Would that be acceptable? Yes, sir. Down there. Okay. Mayor, we turn it back to you. All right. Uh, Council, any comments or discussion? Good session. Good information. So, does anybody want to adjourn, or you all want to stay here a while longer? <laughs> I'm programmed. I'll stay here a little while longer. <laughs> when does uh, fire station? Uh, February. I'm sorry. February. Say that again. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire station two. Uh, the last thing that will happen in fire station two is the uh, is the floor ceiling, not ceiling, but ceiling, and the curing. Once it is uh, installed, which we believe will be around the 1st of February, then it will cure for two weeks before we put any traffic on it at all. So we most likely are going to have the building turned over to us by February 1st, but we most likely will occupy it the third week or so of February. And the nice thing about that is, you know, hey, we have, a, we have a current home for those folks. So if it takes a couple of more weeks, we just didn't want to, to put the sealer on the floor and get trucks on it too early because that's always a challenge. Looks really nice. Yes. Move we adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? All right. All right. Good job.